Today, we're going to um, work on a whole new concept, and that is the concept of electric flux. We've come a long way. We started out with Coulomb's law. We got electric field lines, and now we have electric flux. Suppose I have an electric field, which is like so, and I bring in that electric field a surface, an open surface, like a handkerchief or a piece of paper. And so here it is, something like that. And I carve this surface up in very small surface elements, each with size dA, that's the area, teeny weeny little area, and let this be the normal N roof, the normal on that surface. So now, the local electric field, say at that location, would be, for instance, this. That's a vector. The electric flux, d phi, that goes through this little surface now, is defined as the dot product of E and the vector perpendicular to this element, which has this as a magnitude dA. Now, our book will always write for NDA simply dA. So I will do that also, although I don't like it, but I will follow the notation of the book. So this vector dA is always perpendicular to that little element dA, and it has the magnitude dA. And so this, since it is a dot product, is the magnitude of E times the area dA times the cosine of the angle between these two vectors, theta. And this is scalar. The number can be larger than zero, smaller than zero, and it can be zero. And I can calculate the flux through the entire surface by doing an integral over that whole surface. The unit of flux follows immediately from the definition that is Newton's per Coulomb, so the units of this flux is Newton's per Coulomb times square meters. But no one ever thinks of it that way, just as SU, SI units. I can give you a, some intuition for this flux by comparing it first with an airflow. These red arrows that you see there represent the velocity of air. And you see there a black rectangle three times. In the first case, notice that the normal to the surface of that area is parallel to the velocity vector of the air. And so if you want to know now what the amount of air is in terms of cubic meters per second going through this rectangle, it would be V times A. It's very simple. However, if you rotate this rectangle 90 degrees so that the normal to that rectangle is perpendicular to the velocity vector, nothing goes through that rectangle. And so it's zero. And so now the flux, you can take it air flux, is zero. And if the angle is 60 degrees, then it is, of course, V times A times the cosine of 60 degrees. Now think of these red vectors as electric fields. So now the electric flux going in the first case through that surface is now simply E times A. In the second case, it's zero. And in the last case, it is EA times the cosine of 60 degrees. And so you can sometimes think of this as air flows. We also saw that when we dealt with field lines that can come in sometimes very handy. I now take a surface which is not open as this one is. This is an open surface. It can come in from both sides. But now I choose one that is completely closed, like a potato bag or a balloon. I'll draw, put this line in here to give you a feeling that this is a completely closed surface. 
So you can only get inside if you would penetrate that surface from the outside. And so now I can put up here and here these normals, dA. And there's another normal here, maybe in this direction, dA. In this case, by convention, the normal to the surface, locally to the surface, is always from the inside of the surface to the outside world. It's uniquely determined because it's a closed surface. Here, it was not uniquely determined. I arbitrarily chose this one, but I could have flipped it over 180 degrees. Since it's an open surface, it's ill-defined. Here, it's never ill-defined. So the normal is always chosen, go from the inside to the outside. And now, I can calculate the total flux going through this closed surface, locally multiplying E with dA, dot product, over the whole surface, out comes a certain number. And that is now, therefore, the integral of E dot dA integrated over that closed surface. And since it is a closed surface, we put a circle here to remind us that it is a closed integral. And here, in this case, it is a closed surface. And this now is the total flux through that surface. It could be larger than zero. It could be smaller than zero. It's a scalar. It's not a vector. It could be equal to zero. If it's equal to zero, then you can think of it, whatever flows in, if you think of it as air, also flows out. If more flows out than flows in, then it is positive. If more flows in than flows out, it is negative. So let's now calculate the flux for a very simple case where I have a point charge. So here, I have a point charge, and I'm going to put a bag around this point charge, and the bag is a sphere. It is a sphere, and the sphere has radius capital R. And let this charge be plus Q, just for simplicity. Well, I pick a small element dA here, and that element dA is radially outward. dA, this is the normal to that surface, so that is radial. The electric field at that point is also radial. We have dealt with that before. So the A and E, not only here, but anywhere on the surface of this sphere, are parallel. So the cosine of the angle equals 1. I can also introduce here the unit vector R roof, which is the unit vector going from capital Q to that element where I evaluate the teeny-weeny little amount of flux.